Hey everyone, I'm back with another video on my DIY earrings. These are made of faux suede. I actually did these with the Cricut faux suede. Um, I love the rich colors of the Cricut faux suede. I'm using the red uh, kind of burgundy color on the front, the intricate leaf cutout, and then on the back I've got the black uh, faux suede. Um, and so in this video, I'm gonna show you how to put these together using your Cricut Explorer. Let's take a look at some of the supplies we're gonna use. First, I've got this Cricut Faux Suede material, which I love. I have this pack and I'm gonna use the red, or to me it looks more like a burgundy, and then I'm gonna use this black color. I think those colors are so rich, I love it. You're gonna need a mat, we're using a Cricut machine, so I have a green mat, it needs to be very new and sticky. Your Cricut machine, I've got the Cricut Explorer. Uh, you can cut faux leather and even real leather on your Cricut Explorer. Today, since we're doing this faux leather, we do not need to change our blade to a deep blade. We'll be able to just use the fine point blade. Um, you do need a couple tools when it comes to the jewelry part. Uh, you're gonna need some kind of pliers, either two pair of pliers to work with your um, jump ring to get that open. I like to use this pair and this tool. Really helps me get those jump rings open and closed easily. Uh, these all came as part of a kit a while back. I still use a lot of this stuff. Um, it also came with this great set of earring hooks and all the different colors, uh, gold, silver, um, some other colors in there as well. It comes with the jump rings that match these two. Um, this kit, I'll link this up to my blog, it also comes with quite a few sheets of leather. I'm telling you, it was a really good deal. Um, and I don't really need any more of the tools, but I might end up getting it again because I like all the colors of faux leather in that kit. It was pretty cheap. Um, I also have here, today as I'm doing a bunch of earrings, I have my punch. Now some of my earring uh, templates that I use already have the hole in them and others don't. So I'll only be using this if I need it. This is just a leather punch. It'll go through many layers at the same time. Um, let's see, I think that pretty much covers everything I need for my project. So let's get started. The first thing you need to do when you're making earrings is just to figure out what cup file you're going to use. I ended up purchasing this bundle and it is $6. You can find free stuff on Pinterest and it's all great. I just fell in love with so many of these designs um, in this particular bundle. Um, it even comes with cut files for the earring cards, which I know I can make those, but I always like anything that makes things super easy for me. And I wanna have fun making all the earrings and not so much designing you know, all the different cards. So today I am going to be making a pair from this bundle. Um, and unfortunately this icon's right on top of it. I'm making this leaf over here. I'm going to put my burgundy behind and I'm gonna put my black on top. I think it's gonna be really cute. So I already purchased this and I downloaded it, um, or I should say, I downloaded it to my computer and then I uploaded it into uh, Cricut Des Design Space just by coming over here to upload. Um, and so it's there ready for me. All I need to do is go to my images. And then anytime I come in, I've already done that. And I don't know if you'll be able to notice this, but um, up in this right hand corner where there's filter, um, I always just click right here where it says uploaded. And that just brings all my uploaded files really quickly and I'm not having to search through a lot of different stuff. So here's the file that I'm looking for right here. It's these leaves. I think that they're so cute. So I'm just selecting that and then I'm going to insert the image and bring those onto my canvas. So then I always like to look at it and say, okay, what size are these earrings? Um, sometimes they come in larger than you want. Sometimes they're smaller. These look like the height is about two and a half inches. You can see that right up here. And that's actually perfect. That's exactly what I want. So I'm not even going to change the size of um, the size of these. Now, the other thing I just want to point out, you'll see these in a lot of like some of the nicer bundles 
Over here, you see there's two have holes and two don't, so that you can really do whatever preference. Anything like this, this I will tell you, it's a little tricky because see how narrow these top lines are? I think it's a little harder to work with holes when you're working with really tiny pieces. So I'm actually gonna go with this version because I want my holes in there so I'm not trying to find that spot. I do need though to come over here and ungroup this. So I'm clicking on ungroup because then I need to just delete these over here because I'm gonna make the two that have the holes in them. When I ungrouped it, get all of these to take away. All right, and then just so I can stay really clear, you do not need to change the colors of your files to match the colors you're printing. Those of you who use Cricut a lot know that. I just like to do it because it keeps me really clear. Um, with what I'm sticking into my Cricut machine. So I know that I'm doing those as red and I know I'm doing these as black. So I'm just clicking on each of those and I'm just getting the color changed to the actual color of leather or it's not the faux suede that I'm sticking through here. And I don't know, you probably may not have to do that, but that really helps me keep clear. So this is actually what I'm making. Okay, there is one more thing I wanna show you. Now, I love the look of this Cricut Faux Suede. Um, it has a really rich color. I think the texture's really nice, but I do wanna turn it over just to show you what it looks like on the back. So the back doesn't exactly look beautiful. And the reason I am showing you that is that because when I have these earrings, the the back of the red will be up against the black so you won't see the back of that one but the back of the black will show and if your earrings dangle and turn it will actually show that back side that we don't really like so much that doesn't look quite so well so what i like to do is take just a second and i'm going to make another set of these that i can then put on the back side of each of those. I'm just gonna glue a second cut right to the back so the back side will have a nice looking finish as well. So I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna highlight that one. I'm gonna duplicate it. And I'm gonna take this one and I'm going to duplicate that one. And I'm actually trying to look at these two to see if they are exactly, they look symmetrical. I'm trying to see if they're symmetrical because if they're not, I've got to flip them, but they look symmetrical. So I think I'm going to be fine. And if not, well, I'll make another set of these earrings and I'll redo the backside. All right, so now I think we're ready. I've got everything on the canvas that I need. And now I'm gonna click make it. And it will bring up and show you my black mat and my red mat. So we're gonna go ahead and proceed by clicking on continue to get that black mat in. And while that's pulling up my next step, cause we're waiting for it to bring up my materials, I just wanna show you something really quickly. I do have my dial set on custom because um, that's what I need to have that on anytime I'm working with like the faux suede and the faux leathers. So I haven't done anything, but now that I'm back, you'll see this is loaded. My next step is to set the material. I just click on browse all materials. If you want, you can type it in up here under search. I just quickly scroll down because I know the leathers are the, the brown color, so I can just quickly scroll down to the brown. And then I love using Cricut because you can see the icons here show that these are uh, settings specifically for these Cricut products. And so today I'm working with the faux suede. And so you'll see when I click that, I get the green check mark. So I'll say done. And then now I'm ready to go ahead and proceed. Okay, I do wanna point out one thing here. When we selected faux suede, we got a note came up and it says, move star wheels all the way to the right, and when the cut is complete, return them back to where they were, to their position. 
So uh, some of you may have never moved star wheels before. Uh, these are these little white things. Um, these are here to help really feed the paper in to your, um, to your Cricut machine. I had to get my camera onto my tripod because it's, it's, some of these, sometimes it's really hard to push these. You can get them, but they're, they can be really tight. So I felt like I needed both hands, but you've got to push these white things all the way, these star wings all the way over to the right. Because when you're working with faux suede, um, it can leave indentation marks or really any kind of thick chipboard, any thick kind of fabric. Oh my goodness. Um, and you don't want that. You don't want to run through your really nice suede fabric and then have it have these lines, indentations all down your fabric. Okay, I finally got them all over. Um, so remember, I'm doing my black suede first. There's one thing I meant to show you. I guess I haven't really had a chance to show you yet anyway. Um, I'm going to take off my cover of my mat. Now remember, my leather was only an inch and a, uh, two and a half inches tall. So what I'm going to do is take my cover, this leather, this plastic cover, and I'm going to put it back onto my mat about three inches down. And then just, I'm gonna press that. And the reason I'm doing this is by having this plastic on here, I can put the leather on top of here, but not have any of this nice sticky mat exposed to the leather, because I'm only cutting this piece right here. Technically, I could cut a little piece of the leather and only stick that on. Um, I just, I don't like cutting my leather, leather because I feel like whenever I do that, um, I just somehow I get some waste. So, I'm gonna keep calling it leather, it's my faux suede. Um, so I have that there. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it upside down to cut. So I'm actually going to put it down like this onto my mat. And I know that I'm only cutting four of these, so I'm only going in about halfway. And so I'm really just gonna press this both way down, oops, on um, you know half of this mat, but I, I like to use a roller to really make sure it's grabbing the uh, material. Now, Cricut makes a roller. Um, this is actually my pizza dough roller. And as much as I want the Cricut roller, there's always something else I want a little bit more. So I'm still using my Cricut roller after quite some time. All right, so now I have this ready to load. So I'm just going to go ahead and stick it in here. And then I'm gonna load. And then now that I'm ready, that's my seam. I always keep my hand here on this fabric. It's kind of a habit, probably because I use a lot of non cricket materials. And uh, you'll just learn as you do these uh, when you're not using cricket materials. And if you don't have your setting right, it will, or your mat's not sticky enough, you kind of can get some problems up under here. So I like to just have my hand up here so I can, if I see something popping up, you know, I can do that. I, I, it doesn't seem like I need to do that at all. Again, the reason I love using Cricut materials when I'm doing my projects, uh, I just feel like everything always cuts so, so smooth, just because it knows the exact settings that it needs uh, to use to get through the material. It knows the exact specifications and thickness of what it's cutting through. So, all right, that was super easy. Let's just pull that off. And then now, I love it that none of this was even sticking to the mat, because I've got the top on there. Can pull this off. We've got our four pieces. Right here, and remember this is the back side because we put the right side down and there's our shape, all right? And so remember I cut the first two, the first two were the ones, the original ones, and then the second two were the two I cut to be my backs. So see, I'm just gonna be able to glue those together 
um, and that way as they're hanging down and my burgundy piece is in front of it, if it were to turn for any reason, it would just look really pretty on the back side. Okay, so now we're ready to do our red layer. So I'm back onto my Cricut Design Space. I can see my red here. Um, I do need to make sure that I'm telling it it's faux suede, so it does look like does look like it's reading that to be faux suede. Um, so I think I'm ready to go. Just gonna load the mat. Okay, so, you know, this leaf has a lot of really thin lines, and I have to tell you, I'm always nervous when I cut anything with these thin lines. Um, but I tell you, the best luck I've had has been when I do it with Cricut fabric. So this will be good to see how we do today. Um, I've done a lot of these where it just doesn't work. If you have nicer fabric, it does. But if you're, if I'm using like the Hobby Lobby rolls, a lot of times I'll have a hard time doing really delicate type of lines. So I'm gonna pull this out. Um, try to get it close here so you can watch me get the pieces out. It looks like I am, I might need to do a little bit of cutting. We'll see. Oh, maybe not. Maybe we don't need to do a little bit of cutting. It does look like everything's just kind of lifting right out. Not a big deal if I do end up needing to do a little bit, but so far these pieces are lifting. Now, I will ask as you're watching the video today, if you're finding anything helpful at all, I really appreciate it if you would just take a, a second and tap that like button. Um, if you do like to do DIY projects, you do a lot of uh, party planning or holiday decorating, that's the kind of stuff I do on this channel. Um, so consider subscribing and if you do that, if you tap that bell button, You'll get a notification anytime I post something new. Um, I just really appreciate your support as I get started with my uh, new channel. I've only been doing this. I've done crafts and DIY my whole life, but I've only been doing this channel for a few months now, and I'm really having a lot of fun, but I'm trying to build up my following. So really just appreciate any support. Okay, so that shows you what our leaf looks like. We can put it in front of, if you want to really see what it's going to look like, uh, we can put it in front of here, which is what it'll look like when we make it into an earring, which is just this faux suede leaf. So I think that's really cute. I am going to uh, punch out this other one. I'm not going to make you stick with me for that, but I'm going to quick punch out this other leaf. All right, so I've got all of my leaf parts out of my earring while I... Um, now I just need to glue. That is way too much glue. I can't believe I just did that. I now need to glue my black earrings together. So I just want to match those up. There is a top and a bottom, so I need to match them. So I've got them matched. And then I will put the two bad sides, those are the bad sides. Those are what I'm going to be gluing together here. So I'm just going to get this glue on my brush and glue that, just brush that glue. I really want to get the glue around the edges because I don't want the edges to be lifting. The glue that I'm using today for the project is the E6000 glue. It's kind of my go-to glue anytime I'm doing the DIY earrings because it just does so well on the faux suede and on the faux leather. All right, we're gonna shift gears and talk about how to put these earrings together. So I have the parts of my earrings lined up. So the black faux suede, is glued together and then I've got this piece that's going to fit right on top of that and then I've got two earring hooks and then I've got these jump rings and for those of you unfamiliar with jump rings 
Um, they're circular, and if you look really closely, I'm trying to get an angle where you can see it really well, it's opened, and this is where the earring components will go in. But you have to be careful in opening them because you're gonna need to close it, and you don't want your circle to become misshaped. So you need to use two sets of pliers or a pair of pliers and uh, a jump ring tool. And these jump ring tools have different size of openings for different sizes of jump rings. And basically, when you stick the jump ring into one of those little nooks, you just, I'm trying to get an angle here where you can see it, you just twist it back and open it. So you can see now that opening. Now notice I didn't open it wide, I opened it back. So let's see here if you can kind of see that. That's just really important to know because if you open it left or right, most likely you're not gonna get that ring shut um, in a circular pattern. It's gonna kind of bend down and look a little funny and then things won't lay quite right. It'll also, uh, really diminish the quality of this ring might be more likely to open back up or even break. So, okay, so now my holes didn't punch. I've got to get a hole in here. Now, earlier I was just talking about how challenging these type of designs can be because I've worked with these a lot and it's hard to get the hole with a little space. So I'm just going to use my Cricut tool here and poke a hole through both my red piece and then back through my black piece. So I'm just gonna be really careful because I don't wanna poke it through the fabric and actually rip it when you're working with a piece that's, that is this thin um, and you know the, these delicate leaves uh, just kind of put it at risk. So I'm just really careful and I, you know, I can do it and I've done these before. You just have to put the tool very carefully through the two pieces like I've done here and then you'll be all set to be able to thread it onto the jump ring. Okay and then now we've got to put this one through. And, you know and then we go ahead and take that burgundy or red piece of faux suede and we just place it onto the jump ring just right on top of that black one and then we need to get that jump ring closed. So you've got to grab your pliers again and hold it on one side. And then you either get that second pair of pliers or in my case, I'm using that jump ring tool. Um, and that's what I'll use to close it after I get my hook on. So once the hook's on, I just have to grab that jump ring tool. And I'm just going to twist in the opposite direction than I did the first time when I opened it up. And uh, you just gotta make sure you've got those pliers on the other side so you can really maneuver that tool to get that piece closed. You wanna make sure there's no gap because you don't want any piece like your hook or any of your pieces falling off of your earring. And that's it. Really easy to get these put together once you get those holes punched through the top. Um, and the black just looks so pretty coming through that red and I'm so glad I just took a few extra minutes to cut that second layer of black so that as it does show and twist and turn or someone's to your side I think it just looks so much better to have that nicer layer of black faux suede facing towards the back versus just kind of that back unfinished side. Thanks so much for watching the video today. I think that these faux suede earrings just turned out super cute and I wish you the best of luck if you try the project.